Hey everybody, this is Freddie with LeviathanScuba.com. We're here to talk about defog, the good, the bad, the ugly. Do you need defog anyway? And if you do, what kind is the best? Gel, spray, or spit? We'll get to that in just a minute. You know, my goal really is to try to help you do the best thing for you. And this is one of those subjects that when you go out on the internet and you start looking at comments, people seem kind of passionate about it, right? You get the old timers. They're like, ah, I don't need to buy any stuff. I just spit in my mask, <laughs> right? And I've done it. Does it work? Yeah, it works. I don't want that in my mask. And it's uh, mainly because I've seen people get pink eye quite often. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. But uh, it's just one of those subjects, you know, and then people are so divided. You would think it was a, it was a political thing, a Republican Democrat thing, right? <laughs> with, with gel or spray and all this, it, people are pretty adamant about it. I, hopefully I can demystify it for you and I can really kind of show you how some of the people got to where they're at and really what's best and what's going to be convenient, safe and easy for you and good for the environment. Okay, so do you need defog? My answer is yes, you do need defog. There's a whole bunch of reasons why, but you don't want to be putting water in your mask and every time it fogs up, just shaking your head. That happens in an emergency, one dive. I can get through a dive like that. We've all done it, pain in the butt, but we've all done it. The truth is people are still experimenting in the modern technology with all the defogs on the market. There are people still out there experimenting between the old school and the modern products. You know, some people spit, some people use soap, shaving cream, toothpaste, tea bags, kelp leaves, baby shampoo, banana peels. They even cut raw potatoes and slide them around on the inside of their mask, right? Just because something works doesn't mean you should use it, right? I, I would like to talk to the guy that first sliced a potato, rubbed it on the inside of his mask and goes, hey, wow, that works awesome. I'm gonna bring potatoes with me on my dive trips in the future. Uh, I have tried the, tried the kelp leaves though in a pinch, that, that works really good. It's one dive, doesn't last much longer than that, but it actually does work. Okay, so if you happen to run out of your defog and there's plenty of kelp out there, just go snatch a leaf and you can eat it when you're done too. So let's talk about probably the number one comment on the internet that a lot of people do. I think they think we retailers are trying to rip you off by selling you a product when you could just spit in your mask and that's free. I get it. I get it. We are trying to sell a product, but it's a product that was designed to work really well in numerous circumstances. I'll tell you, spit doesn't work that good anyway. Now I know I'm gonna get those comments down below. They're gonna say, I've been diving for 50 years and all I do is spit in my mask and it's worked for 50 years and I never did get an eye infection. Okay, I get it. Good for you, I'm happy for you. But I'm gonna say this, for me, spit just doesn't last that long. When I first became a diver, I did it too and it's, if you get through a complete dive, you're doing good, but it just doesn't make it through the dive that much. And I've seen so many people get pink eye. I really have. Do you know your spit is loaded with bacteria? And you spit in your mask, it's going to breed. It's going to grow because bacteria grows in salt water. Same as in your eyes. Your eyes have salt water in them or fresh water. It doesn't matter. Then it's going to get in the little cracks and crevices around the seam of your mask and you're going to have that in there when you don't have to, right? To what? Save six bucks, seven bucks? That's not, that's not even worth the chance, right? To have something so convenient. Plus a defog product is going to last multiple, multiple dives. Okay. Let's jump on to one of my pet peeves. And I know I'm going to get comments down below too, but it's only because I care for the ocean. I've seen the ocean in the last 50 years just go down big time. And we all learned our lesson with, you know, reef safe sunscreen, and it's starting to make a difference by us avoiding that. And it might cost a little bit more for that kind of sunscreen versus the, the cheaper stuff, but it's not going to kill the coral. And you have thousands and thousands and thousands of people that are divers in the ocean every single day, sometimes in one location, and you pump a lot of that stuff in the ocean. Well, so I'm going to talk a little bit about 
<laughs> perhaps maybe even your favorite defrog. A lot of people use it. Baby shampoo. Um, you can check out my blog on it. I'll have the list of all the chemicals there that you can see what's actually in baby shampoo. Some are better than others, right? Some that don't have fragrances and things like that. But I printed it out in 11 point font, which is very small. And it took almost three pages. And the back of the backs of two of the pages, and that's just the chemicals that are in baby shampoos. And because some of them are chemicals used to thin out other chemicals, they're not required to be listed on the bottle themselves. But we're pumping this into the ocean. Okay, one diver putting a little baby shampoo in their mask and then rinsing it out, no big deal, okay? But this is every dive boat out there in a third world country, they all have defog and they use baby shampoo as their defog. So people are putting it in their mask, rubbing it around in there, and then they're rinsing it into the ocean. And if I were just to read you, and I mean, I, this is just five or six of the results of some of those chemicals. I can't even pronounce the chemicals, some of them. But, you know, at the very least, they're an irritant to your eyes and your skin. Reproductive and nervous system toxic toxicity, carcinogenic, known human carcinogen, mammary gland tumors, known human carcinogen, known carcinogen, toxicant, endocrine disruptor, toxic to the liver, uh, uh, affects the cardiovascular nervous system, uh, changes liver, kidney, and spleen functioning, reproductive and nervous system toxicity. I'm not even halfway through the page. So I'm just, you can tell I'm passionate about this. I see it all over the place. Baby shampoo works, and I think they use it because for the price of this, you can buy a whole big giant bottle of baby shampoo will get you so much more. Okay, it's a great deal. But using it and pumping it into the ocean, rinsing it off into the ocean is a terrible thing to do. So hopefully I guilted you into it a little bit or out of it a little bit. And... Uh, you'll avoid some of that baby shampoo. So I'm gonna to recommend to you that you use a commercial product that's actually made for masks, right? They're safe, they're easy to use, they're manufactured for the use of the modern products like a mask with a silicone skirt, right? And uh, they're cheap. I mean, six to 10 bucks is kind of your average. And they're gonna last you a long time. This Leviathan slime bottle, there's over 100 uses in here. 100 squirts, so that's gonna last you a very, very long time. I don't know how much you dive, but if you dove 100 dives a month, what is that, seven bucks, eight bucks a month? So that's not bad, okay? Blogs out there on the internet, they are full of everybody touting their favorite. So which brand is the favorite one? I'm gonna say it's the one you use the most, right? It's the one you like the best. But how did somebody come to the point and say, I won't use anything but this product, brand X. So typically this is what happens. Most people don't know the condition of their lens on their mask right now. Is it clean, spotless? Does it have a little bit of oil on it, some fingerprints on it? You know, when you're, when you're diving or snorkeling, you have oil in your sweat and you're sweating in your fingertips. You have sunblock or suntan lotion or makeup or even in your snot. You know, there's, there's oil in it and it gets on the lens. And we don't clean it every single, every single time. So the condition of our lens is more important than which defog you use. Because let's say your lens is not perfect right now. Just has a little bit of film on it. And you spray this product in there. And you go diving. You come up and you're like, man, I don't know. Everybody talks about that Leviathan slime, but it sucks. And then the other guy goes, oh, heck no, man. That's the best stuff I've ever used. And so wh why the difference? Because it's not going to stick to a di dirty lens. So the next time you clean your lens, somebody says, ah, just clean it with toothpaste or something. Blah, blah. You clean it up, and then you try this product. And you put it on there, and gee, it worked perfect. Well, this also would have worked perfect had your lens been equal, had it been clean on both of them. So that's what I say. The, the truth is, it's not about which product is, is the best. It's about the preparation more than the product. I know they're not going to want me to say that. They all want you to believe that it's absolutely the best defog on the market. And I'm certain that somebody here has more of one chemical than 
than the other, and that's the chemical that works the best, so maybe it is, but I'm going to tell you that most of them are almost all identical. Their ingredients are a little different from each other, so there's no copyright infringement, but they all do the same thing with the same basis of almost all of them. And I'll give you another secret. Within the same brand, the spit gel and the spit spray, you're going to decide you like one better, but guess what? They are exactly the same chemical. One's just a little bit more thinner or watered down than the other one, but they're identical. They're exactly the same. So, one of the things I'm going to recommend that you do is go check out one of our videos on choosing the right mask because we go into the cleaning of the lens and or our mask care video that shows you how to properly clean a mask because you really have to get them super clean. And if it's a brand new mask, you're never going to get any one of these products to work until you get that film off of there. Okay. So that's for another video. But when you get right down to it, the next biggest qu question for people is gel versus spray. And those, the gel is um, very thick. It can be the consistency of um, you know, a very, very, very thick liquid, almost like motor oil kind of consistency, all the way to something that's almost like jello. It's, it's thick, or it's a pa paste in a tub that you have to kind of dig some out and then spread on your mask with, okay? So that's what the gel would be. And then the spray, obviously, is something that'll pass through a sprayer. It's thin enough like a liquid that you can spray on. They both have pros and cons. There's good and there's bad to both sides. So starting with the gel, the pros are that the gel on your mask, when you apply it to your mask properly, is going to last longer than a spray, right? It's a little thicker. Um, it's going to last four to six dives usually pretty easily before you have to redo it, and it won't leak in your luggage. The gel is like a thick paste or something. It's not going to run, so the pressure difference in the, in the airplane isn't going to squeeze the bottle and squeeze it all out into your luggage. Okay, the negatives for the gel is that it's less convenient to apply. If you think about putting it on there, you either have to use your thumb or something, dig it out of a little tub, or squeeze it out of a bottle and put it on there, and then you have to spread it around. The ones that are like motor oil, that's a little better, a little easier than the thicker ones, but uh, it's going to go on quite a bit thicker. The other part of that that's negative is it can be gloppy, it can be spotty, you can have you know, chunks of gel on your lens when you're done. You try to rub it around, but you get these little, you know, globs of it on there and some waves sometimes that you're looking through. So your vision isn't quite as good as a spray when it's, uh, when it's not, you know, thinned out real well. So it coats the lens better. That's why it lasts longer, but it can be gloppier. Um, and it does dry out quicker in the bottle. You'll go to get your defog and you look in there and you can't even get it to come out of the bottle anymore because it kind of dried up in there. Didn't have a lot of liquid liquidity to it in the beginning. So that's one of the negatives. The, the, the spray, the pros for the spray is it's very, very convenient and easy to apply. Spray, spray, move it around, rinse it out and go. That, that simple. Um, you get clearer vision out of it because you don't have that thicker layer that you have to thin out by rinsing more or something like that. And um, so it's very simple. The negatives are it doesn't last as long. You'll find most people use a spray every single dive. They'll, they'll reapply it every single dive. And I, as I've found, the pressure can affect it and it can leak inside your luggage. So you have to put it in a plastic bag when you travel. Okay. Now, my answer is um, kind of what we did with the gel with Leviathan uh, slime. You have the spray, which is the liquid. You have the slime, which is almost like motor oil. And this is how you can do it with any gel. We use a, a process, but it's, it still works similarly. You take a gel and you give some uh, distilled water. And you want distilled because you don't want any minerals in the water because it'll make hard water spots on your lens when you're laying it in the sun in the Caribbean at lunch or something like that. But you put a little distilled water in there. How much? It's going to depend on the consistency that you end up liking the best. But I'm going to say about 10 to 15 percent of the volume of the bottle. You make it uh, distilled water. Shake it up. Get it to mix really, really well. It'll stay thinned out. It won't get thick in your closet at home. When you apply it, you'll be able 
to squeeze it easier. It's less gloppy. You're not chasing around little chunks on your lens when you're trying to put it on there. And, uh, and it lasts pretty good. Okay, it'll last you more than one dive, more than two, probably. The, well, I I use it. I use the Leviathan Slime Gel, and it'll last me an entire day. Whether I'm diving three dives, four dives, five dives that day, or only two dives, I do it once a day. I, maybe I don't have to do it tomorrow morning, but every day I do it one time, and it's just kind of my routine. Okay, so it works out really well. If you wanted to. You could thin it out even further to use in a sprayer, but that's really, really, really difficult to get the proper consistency so that you're getting enough defog on there and not just distilled water. So I would say only add water to the gel. Don't try to take it even further and make double the amount of the spray because it just doesn't seem to work out so good. It's just too thin when you do it that way. Okay, so the the best application this is also kind of a secret you know tip and trick kind of thing that that helps it last much longer on your lens um you you spray it in and then can you imagine you have your rinse bucket right here you have your mask here spray 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 rinse 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 that's not gonna last very long because it, it got on but it didn't have have any time to adhere to the lens that's the idea you want this to stick to the glass so that your fog or your mist or your humidity from your breath and your heat doesn't, okay? Um, so apply it and let it sit a bit. I'm actually gonna read to you, it's got a sense of humor, right? The Leviathan uh, Slime Spray Bottle says, do you wanna use twice the amount of the cheap stuff or do it right the first time? Nothing pisses us off worse than a fogged mask. Just a spritz on each lens Rub till you smile, let it sit a bit, and rinse. Enjoy clarity. So what does it mean, let it sit a bit? This is what I've practiced my whole diving career, and it works perfect. If you're going to go diving on the beach, at some point you're preparing your mask. You're pulling it out of the mask box, out of your dive bag, whatever. You're putting some defog in it, right? Stop. Put the defog in. Pause. If you're on a dive boat, you're doing the same thing at some point. Whether your dive boat ride is five minutes to the dive site, 50 minutes or two hours to the dive site. Spray it in, let it sit. I take mine and I put it on the back of my tank on the boat and I let it sit. If it's a five minute boat ride, it sits for five minutes. If it's a 50 minute boat ride, even if it dries, I don't care. And that really gives it a good chance to adhere to the lens. Same thing if I were to use a gel or if I use the slime gel, I rub it in there and I let it sit. I don't rinse it out. Not right away anyway. Okay? Then, when you're ready to dive, rinse it. You're good to go. Now, I'll also tell you, this is also a funny thing I get a little humor out of. And next time you're on a dive trip and you're just sitting back, maybe you'll chuckle when you think about this, but you watch somebody, they put their defog in their mask and they're so concentrated in there. This is important stuff. <laughs> and then what do they do? They stand up, whether they're in their fins or not, and they walk all the way to the back of the boat or to the rinse bucket, and they rinse it out, and they come all the way back. They're stepping across people's fins and all that kind of stuff. Guess what? You're going to be in the water in a few seconds anyway. So I take my mask. I don't rinse it. Put it on my head. Get my gear on. Right? Get buckled up. Stand up. Make it to the back of the boat, and I jump in. Pull the mask away from my face a little bit. Stretch it out. Shake it, put it on, dump the water, and I go diving. There's no separate process. I don't need to go all the way back or find a rinse bucket, rinse it, put it on my, my head, then do all these kind of crazy things. I just, let's make it easy, right? Just put it on your head and go. It's going to rinse. You're going to be in the water in a few seconds. Just pull it away and rinse it off, right? Piece of cake. Okay, so um, now we're going to talk a little bit about troubleshooting. So... We get a lot of comments down below, and we've done these videos before when we did them for 5280. Now this is all new, and we're going to try to answer those questions. One of the most common questions we get with the defog, first of all, is gel or spray. We just talked about that. The next most common troubleshooting kind of question would be, you know, okay, I defogged my mask, but it's still fogged up. Why? I'm so frustrated. So I, if it's a new mask, then it's because there's a film on the lens that during manufacturing that dries. And you have to 
virtually scratch it off. You have to scrub it so good that it's off. Now, you can't see it, so it's hard to tell. It's crystal clear and you can't see it, but defog won't stick to it. So a brand spanking new mask, you pull it out of the box, you're the first one that ever touched human hands on this thing, and it's gonna fog up terrible, I don't care which defog you use, right? So what you do is you clean the lens really, really good. Use a commercial mask cleaner, they're meant to scratch it. Don't use toothpaste, I know, I know, I know. I hear it all the time. It's not because I'm trying to sell you something. It's because when you use toothpaste, you push a little bit underneath the silicone skirt and you can see it. And then the silicone doesn't touch the glass on modern lenses, right? Or soaps like Comet or, you know, uh, pot, pot scrub cleaner, you know, those kind of things and, and uh, different kinds of soaps. You're going to get a little bit underneath the silicone. Use a product that's made for it. It's going to scratch that off the lens. We put a little card in our mask boxes that says do it four times on the inside, do it one time on the outside for at least three minutes, and you apply a little pressure, you dig, and you use a t-shirt, not, not like a terry cloth or a washcloth because it absorbs too much of the mask scrub cleaner, you know. But once you get that lens really clean, you've scrubbed it four good times, you should you know, spend some time on it, then guess what? The defog's gonna work. Now that film never comes back, but you can get oil on the lens from your sweat, your fingerprints, sunblock, suntan lotion, that kind of stuff. So every now and then, if your defog doesn't seem to be working, it didn't get old. It's not wearing out. It's the fact that your lens is getting dirty and it's hard to tell. After that, after the initial cleaning, you've had your mask for a while, put a couple of drops of a good mask cleaner on there, swish it around the lens, your finger ought to squeak a little bit, rinse it off, put your defog on, let it sit a bit, and go. Okay, so that's the biggest reason is that the, the, the lens isn't clean. So if you've had a mask for a long time and it's worked before with other defogs and it's not working now with a real defog, then it's because the lens is dirty 100% of the time. Okay, um, if you've experimented with something that somebody told you works, but it might not, that could also be uh, a cause. I'll give you a great example. Uh, Windex. People have used that. It's a branded product. It's meant to clean glass. It does a great job. But you know what? It cleans the, the grease off the lens, which is okay. It doesn't take that film off when it's brand new. I'm just saying. But people think that the clean lens me means it'll defog the lens. It won't. It's now just clean glass, okay? You can go up to it and you can uh, make it fog at your windows at home. So some products aren't meant to work. And if you try a banana peel and it doesn't work good, then great. Banana peels don't work good. <laughs> okay. That's like I say, spit. You use spit, but guess what? You watch those divers in the cold weather and they're warm bodied and they're in the cold water. They're not spitting in their lands because it doesn't work. It'll work for 15 minutes or so, and then you start fogging up terrible. That's when they resort to a commercial product anyway. Hey, you know, I hope I've helped. I hope I haven't stepped on any toes, and we've clarified some of the, the questions that are out there. If you do have any questions that I didn't cover, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And you know what? Why not, why not check out LeviathanScuba.com? You know why we do these videos. Hopefully, they'll help make you a better diver, keep you in the sport longer, help you share your passion with others. If you can think of somebody else that might benefit from these videos, why don't you share it with them? That'll help us grow. And if by some chance you enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, if you subscribe, we'll let you know when the next one comes out. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.